Hi, um, welcome to this video, which is a sort of recap of a lesson I taught live in class about making sure your, your object story, your taking things seriously story, shows two things. One, the five W's of your object. Who, what, where, when, why. And then finally, why another part of the story that every one of these has is why the author kept it, why they chose to keep this object for so long and not throw it away. So let's take a look at a couple sample stories. And I want to point out for you um, where we're seeing the five W's and the reason why. Okay. So um, let's talk, let's look at this little pine cone one first. It's the most simple. So it's sort of easy to start simple. So this one says a tiny little pine cone. So already we've been told what it is. Sorry, excuse the pen here. Um, and then we get some more details about what it is. It's less than a quarter inch. Um, I call it the baby pine cone because it seems so innocent and simple. More about what? I really love it. I picked it up in the fall of 2003. That's the when. When did the person get this object? Fall of 2003. On a walk in the woods in upstate New York. So now we know where, where this came from. Excellent. It sits on the bathroom sink. So it's another version of where, which is the second part of where, where you found it and where you keep it. That's another where that may apply to you as well. I look at it every morning while I brush my teeth. It makes me happy. Okay. So we have, um, I guess, how. The how is I picked it up. Okay. How did she get it? She picked it up. So here we have the, uh, and it's I picked it up. So that's the who. She found it. It wasn't a gift from someone else. So here we have who, what, where, when, why, and maybe a how as well. And now, so we've got that. We want to make sure we say all of that because I know there's a picture right there, but we need to make sure we've told our readers those five W details. And then let's look at the, um, why did she keep it? Oh, cool. A tiny pine cone. Why not just throw it away afterwards? Or why not put it in the trash a week later? And here we have, it makes me happy. It's very short, but there it is. I at least know why she kept it. And she also says up here, I really love it. Okay. Excellent. Um, let's see if there's a quick and easy way to erase everything. Okay. So that is our first story. You know, I really wish there was a way to erase this faster. Whoa. Wipe screen clear. Alt Z. Alt Z. Ooh, nice. Okay. So now let's look at, um, let's look at a neck, the next story. Um, I scrounged some iron-on letters from the dollar bin. Okay. Um, so here we have the shirt. Let's go back to red for the W's. Okay. I, that's the who. Okay. Scrounged some iron-on letters from the dollar bin at Solo Fabric Discount Store. That's the where in Cambridge, Massachusetts. That's the where. When... One day while I was waiting for my mom at the beauty salon. Okay. Um, and now we're getting some kind of why, perhaps. Her hair was thinning from chemotherapy and she was trying to make the best of it. So the chemotherapy is a bit of the why. Um, and she's trying to make the best of it. My mom had lung cancer. She died eight months the day after I made the shirt. So that's some more time info. That's more of the when details. The shirt hangs in the doorway to, into a closet in my bedroom. And there we have some more wear. Everyone asks where I got it, but nobody asks what it means. One visitor told me it feels like a warning. I suppose it is. So what's interesting about this story is here we have our W's, right? Go, good. And I assume the, the how, how did she do this? They, she ironed them on with the iron. So that's a little bit of how. Oh, that is crazy. Okay. Okay. But... The when, the why did she keep this object so long is not explicitly stated. The last story she said, it makes me happy. This story, um, it's sort of hidden in this, I suppose it is, and she died. So she made this while her mom was getting, you know, her hair done after her cancer. Then her mom died and she says, it feels like a warning. Love is not enough. So she didn't explicitly say, I keep this because it reminds me of my mom who passed away. But we can read between the lines and she's left us some hints, okay? So you maybe with your object, you don't explicitly state why you've kept it so long. It might be hinted at. Um, and what you want to do is you want to ask your writing group, do you understand why I kept it? 
And if they can tell you without you saying, is it because my mom died? If you, if you could say, why do you think I kept this? And they could tell you back the true reason, then you've communicated it well. So that's a good thing to ask. Okay. Um, let's look at one more uh, example. Um, I'm going to do the artichoke. It's a little bit shorter. Okay. So let's start with looking for the W's. Do we know what it is? Let's look. Artichoke. What? Okay. Sat on our kitchen windowsill. Where? For months, some years ago. When? Oops. Okay, good. At first, it was ugly and disgusting and kind of gooey. <laughs> and guests would say ick. That's a little bit more about what. Or maybe even the how. How did it become what it is today? Um, it slowly dried out. Changed color. That's more about the what. What does it look like? Um, I've now had it for 10 years. Some more when details. Okay. Um, I think it's rather beautiful. I keep trying to use it in a design project. What do you think that might be? Let me switch colors. We have to ask ourselves, does the author help us understand why they've kept it so long? I think it's rather beautiful. Simple as that. I think it's beautiful. I keep trying to use it in a design project. I photographed it numerous times. People, others do not seem to appreciate the intrinsic beauty of this thing, like, like the author does, like William Drentel does. Over time, it became more fragile, and I worry that it will break. So it sits carefully placed on my bookcase. Okay. More details, details about where it is. Where is your object right now? Where do you keep it? That's an interesting detail for the story. Next to some Roman pottery, a couple thousand of years, years older. No one touches the older, more fragile pottery, of course, but many pick up my artichoke. Okay. So even in this simple three-paragraph story, I know what this is. I know how it became what it is, when that happened, where that happened. Um, and I know where it is kept today. And I know why this writer likes it so much. He finds it very beautiful, very fragile, um, and uh, just sort of beautiful and worthy of photographing. Yeah? Okay. So hopefully that was helpful. I want you to go back to your story and I want you to ask yourself, have you clearly stated what your object is, where you got it, where you keep it, when you got it, how you got it, who gave it to you? Did you find it? Did you make it? Was it a gift? And then why have you kept it so long? What does it mean to you? Um, I'm not going to go through it, but if you want to look back at the previous story about, sorry, the, um, the egg, the egg has a nice final paragraph. Uh, about why he has kept it so long, even though he got it in the third grade and it was, you know, he's in his 30s now or 40s. And that last paragraph does a beautiful job in just one sentence of telling us why he's kept it so long, although we probably kind of got the hints in this paragraph. The egg, which is so delicate and which has survived so long, speaks to me of the hope and the promise of friendship. Yeah, delicate, but also long lasting, like friendship. Friends, thank you so much for this lesson. If you missed it in class or wanted to recap, but I'm going to be looking for that in your story. So make sure you've incorporated that. Thanks guys.